Good morning. And welcome to our Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We have these little about 10 minute Bible studies Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Been looking at uh, what the Bible says to the believer. And right now we're talking about what our duty is to the church, what our responsibility is to the local church, and uh, what, you, what you need to be doing. So, um, first of all, you need to be attending church. You know, that's one of the things we talk about. The, uh, people say, you know, well, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian, and that's true. But you need, to, if you're a Christian, you need to go to church to be obedient. Because over in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, I think verse 25, it says, For not forsaking the assembling of yourself as is the manner of some. So when the doors are open and when you can't be there, you, know, you should be there. And, and we should make it a priority to go to church. And so uh, what we're looking at today here says that you should obey church leaders and pray for them. So I have to wear some reading glasses now since I get, have some cataract work. And um, so we can see I wear these reading glasses so I can read what I need to tell you here. So we're going to be uh, obey the church leaders and pray for them. In Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 17, it says, Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. So it's the attitude that, with the obedience in it. You know, this, uh, the, the pastor, the teacher, re student relationship, a parishioner relationship, uh, we we're trying to accomplish the same thing. We want to bring glory to God. And so the the, uh, the pastor, the preacher, the, the teacher, uh, God speaks through them. He, he gives them the lesson to teach. He gives them the, the, the sermon to preach. And it, it, the intent is to draw you closer to God and to help you in your growth. And uh, maybe if you need to be corrected, uh, to help you understand where you're at so you can bring some conviction into the picture. Uh, but that's the idea. So we need to be obedient to our church leaders and and as they as they teach, we need to be submissive to the what they're teaching. It, it's not so much that you're submissive to them, but you're submissive to the will of God, right? To the word of God. Uh, Paul had something over here in First uh, Corinthians 11:1. 1. He makes a real, real simple statement. He says, "I want you to be followers of me." And I've heard people say, you know, uh, don't do as I do, do as I say, don't, not as I do. In other words, they're hypocrites. They're saying this, but they're doing that. And uh, he says, so, but Paul's not saying it. He says, I want you to be a follower of me, but there's a condition. You know, I don't want you to follow me as a, as a person, as a man. He said, I want you to follow me even as I also am of Christ. Even as I'm a follower of Christ. So what he's telling the people that he's talking to in the church of Corinth, he says, you know what? Uh, I want you to look at me, I want you to look at my life, and as I follow Christ, I want you to follow me. And if you see that I'm not following Christ, then don't follow me. And that's, that's kind of the, the illustration, if you would, that we need to have as, as parents, as leaders in the church, we need to be leading people uh, in the right way. And as we're doing what's right, as we're living righteously, and then people can follow us and uh, then they can be honored, be, bring glory to God. And so keep in mind now the responsibility is it's not the man. It's the man, what the man or woman is preaching or teaching. Okay, we believe that the men are for the pastors, the preachers, and we have women teachers and and uh, different aspects of uh, church work. But the idea is that uh, as God uses these people, He's going to use them to bring His word to them if they're obedient and submissive. So He tells us here, He says, uh, "Church leaders are are called to watch over our souls." And as as a pastor, uh, that's how you prepare your message. You you look at the congregation and you pray about it. And Lord, well, what do we need? Uh, what direction do we need to take? And as you look at a certain scripture, how does this apply? And so we we need to be watchful. And he says there's there's an accountability to being a church leader, being a pastor or a teacher. Uh, we're to do it in a way that that God wants it done according to His word. It's not my word. It's not somebody else's word. It's what God says. Uh, it's just like the prophets in the Old Testament. What the Lord said is what the message they need to bring to the people. It's not, not how you feel. It's not how you feel that the people are or the situation is. It's what God has to say about us. So we need to be uh, watching uh, and uh, doing what we can to, to walk faithfully. Okay? Just listen to the, the counsel and exhortation of the leaders. Uh, they're, we're accountable to God. He says that uh, to whom much is given, much is required. And as, as a teacher... As a leader, we read that over in James, you know, this is going to be, you're going to be held more accountable if you if you slack off on what you're supposed to be doing on your teaching, especially as a, as a preacher. If you're not preaching the Word of God, if you're not staying true to Scripture, 
uh, there's, it's easy sometimes, you know, you get to get your emotions in there, but we need to be careful as, as leaders and as preachers and pastors to, to stay true to the Word of God, to bring it through so people uh, have what God wants them to do. See, that's the, the convicting power. In, in my opinions, my opinions and my thoughts uh, aren't that uh, powerful. It's what God says, and that's what the Holy Spirit uses. He uses the Word of God in a person's life to bring conviction. Uh, we, we can go back to even salvation. Uh, the person needs to hear the gospel uh, presented by someone, a man or a woman, from the, or even on television or whatever. But they need to hear the gospel. And when they hear the gospel, then the Holy Spirit can take that gospel, that word of God, in that person's life. And then he can work and draw them then to come to know Christ as their Savior. We know that the, the Bible tells us over in John 6, 44, that, that you can't get saved unless you're drawn by God, by the Father. Well, we know that works through the Holy Spirit that He's in us. And so He brings that convicting power. Then we have to make a decision. And that's why it's so important that you don't turn away, that you put your faith in Christ, in Christ at that time. And if the, the preacher, the leader, is not presenting that Word in such a way to, to bring... Uh, a person help bring a person under conviction. We can't save anybody, but God does it through His Word and His Spirit. And also, if the accountability, if you're not living right, if you're not doing right, and that's what the whole. When we look at the, the book at First Corinthians, that the church of Corinth was in in bad shape. We can look through there, and you can see all kind of things that Paul's pointing to. This is what you need to do. You don't go to court with each other. You settle those differences among yourself. All these kind of things that they were doing. There was a fornication, a case of fornication. And, and all these different things are going on. So uh, the idea is that the preacher, uh, the teacher needs to be bringing these things forth so then the guy can use this to bring conviction and cause people to repent and turn and do what they need to be doing. Uh, and he, he said, makes a statement here in this uh, lesson. He says, church leaders can be grieved and hurt. If you follow their lead and grow in the Lord, uh, they are filled with joy because the work of Christ is going forth. And I, I can identify with that. The idea is that when, when you see, when you're, you're leading in a church, when you're preaching, you're teaching in a church, and you see on those at, in the audience, you see people's lives, you see how they walk in, in tune with the Lord, you see it, it's making a difference. It is. It makes you feel good. It's one of those situations you feel like you're accomplishing something. But on the other hand, when you, you invest time and, and uh, effort into a person's life and you disciple and you train, and all, you see that person kind of go along for a while and all of a sudden they're out in left field someplace they're completely living uh, oblivious to what God would have them to do. They're living completely in disobedience to what God would have them to do. And you wonder, what, what happened? You know, where did I go wrong? What, what did I fail to do on my part? Uh, was it something I said that caused them to turn away? Was it something I did that they misinterpreted and they turned away? So you always you, you reflect back and you look at your own life as a, as a pastor. You know, do you think did is there something that I could have did different? Is there was there some time that God wanted me to say something and I didn't do it? And uh, you know, as we as we prepare lessons, as you prepare messages, and that you try to be sensitive to what God worked. See, uh, sometimes I've had people say, "Well, you know, that that was you sure preached that at me, or you sure hit me with that." But see, I have no idea who's going to be there on Sunday morning. I I don't know who's going to be there on Sunday morning. I, um, most of the time my wife's going to be there, she's there, and I, I really believe her. And there's, there's several people in the church that are faithful to be there every time the doors are open. So you, you expect them, but I don't know. Something might come up that they can't be there. So I don't know. So if you say, I'm, I'm preaching at you today, that was how God worked. That was a message He had, and that's what He wanted you to hear. So the, the, the preacher, it don't, it, don't, it don't work. I've heard preachers try to preach at people, and it don't work. No, that, that, that's, the, that's the flesh getting in the way. We don't want that to happen. We want to go back to the Word of God. And if you see have things in the church, the circumstances that, are, that seem to be moving and, and taking your church away, then we can go to the Word of God and try to bring it back. We use the Word then. But that's the Word of God. That's not what the preacher thinks or feels. Okay? And then the last thing I want to look at here was uh, the idea that uh, you want to be praying for your church leaders. Uh, your pastor... Uh, you know, the, the people in our church here, that they pray for me and that, and my wife. We need your prayers. Pastors, leaders in your church, they need your prayers. Because we face things just like you do. There's temptations, there's trials, there's circumstances out there that, that pull at you and try to upset your life. The devil's at work. He wants you to fall. He wants you to fail. And so we have to be aware that, that we need to get that prayer. We need that uh, strength. We need that encouragement. We need that protection uh, by God with the Word and the Holy Spirit. So, just do your part, be responsible members of the local church. 
and do follow follow the leader of your pastor of your teachers as as Paul says as they follow the Lord as they preach and teach and follow the Lord then you can follow them. So, but if you don't know Christ as your Savior, then you need to get saved first. When God touches your heart, He gives you the desire to be a Christian to turn, put your faith in Christ. You need to do that. You need to repent, turn from the world, turn and put your faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that's payment for your sin. When God touches you, that's the time to respond. When He touches you. He has to touch you to draw you, to give you the, the feeling, the inclination to be saved. If he don't touch you, then it's not going to happen. You just don't, you don't get saved whenever you want to. He has to touch you first. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray, Lord, we'd be found faithful and uh, that we would do your will in our lives in a way that brings honor and glory to you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.